On the northwestern end of Carlsbad off New Mexico 524 West is the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens. This New Mexico State Park is devoted to representing the ecosystem of the Chihuahuan Desert, its trails weaving you through the various landscapes of the region, as well as the habitats of more than 40 native animal species, the majority of them being rescues. So Catherine, can you tell me a little bit uh, about what you guys do here at the Living Desert Zoo? And we are a very unique zoo. We talk only about the Chihuahuan Desert, which is where we are located in Carlsbad. And it's a desert with a lot of altitudes, a lot of different geology. So along the trail, we actually recreate different areas of the desert so you feel like you're in natural areas. Okay. And the plants grow as they would in nature and the animals are in natural exhibits along the way. Just as we enter the sand hills, I catch a glimpse of something circling in the sky above us. Immersion is right, but more birds are on the way and at a much closer vantage point. My first encounter is with a golden eagle, whose gaze makes me wonder if he's sizing me up. If you're lucky, you've seen some of these birds out in the wild, but probably less likely that you've had the opportunity to exchange such curious glances with them. And then we have our red tail hawk. Both huge. And it's, I don't know if you can see from this angle, but the red tail hawk is missing an eye. Oh, I couldn't tell. Yeah, I... they have binocular vision. And with one eye, she can't judge distances, mm -hmm. which is why she's here. But it's so majestic and, still. Yeah, yeah aren't they something? Leaving the aviary, our winged escort continues to soar above us as we wander through the desert uplands and the gypsum hills, ultimately making our way to the habitat the beloved prairie dogs now call home. These are our black-tailed prairie dogs. They live in colonies. They're a large ground squirrels. And they actually have a sentry out most of the time who sits on a high place and watches for any danger. Oh. And they, they've had scientists study prairie dogs a lot. And it turns out that different colonies in different areas have their own dialects. I've always known these little guys were cute, but turns out they have more going for them? Who knew? We're coming up to Lena's exhibit. And Lena is a javelina, oh, hey. and she was actually found at, she was about two days old. Her mother was hit by a truck along the highway, and the, they stopped to see what they had hit. And there was a mama javelina with two babies, sure. and the other twin didn't make it. She died of hypothermia. And Lena was raised actually by someone here, then raised on a bottle, and she does not know how to be a wild javelina. With the exception of the reptiles and some of the amphibians at this zoo, all of these animals are orphans or rescues, or have been bred in captivity so they are unable to live in the wild. Hearing their backstories makes me grateful this place this exists, giving them a lions. safe environment to live and educating us humans on these wonderful animals. And I'm about to meet one of the superstars of the zoo, and we've timed it just right. It's her feeding time. And you can see how she's hiding some of it, and Maggie will come out and be able to see and forage for her food. Maggie is a black bear and the zoo's resident artist. For enrichment, Maggie was taught how to paint and her abstract paintings have been sold nationwide. Proceeds from her art sales support the zoo's rescue efforts and continuous care for her and her fellow animals. Way to go, Maggie. While wandering on the trail, keep an eye out for tracks. Lots of critters can be found outside the exhibits. Inside, check out the interactive exhibits where you can make your own tracks. And don't miss the nocturnal exhibit where you can get a first-hand experience of seeing some of these animals' night vision. 